Livingston. Ariki Tan shoots. Build the dream in FIFA 20, pay less and get more, and use the code TVM at checkout for a bigger discount. What is going on guys, TVM here, welcome back to another video. Today is sort of a squad builder, but it's also um, just a few hints here or there really as to how to complete those, uh, those initial objectives. So the objective that we're going to be going for today is the squad battle and the online 83 rated squad requirement. There are two tokens up for grabs using the exact same squad you need an 83 rated team with only gold cards now ones to watch cards uh they count uh, as well as foot champs cards and informs as well this has been confirmed by community managers but also uh i've, I've done the squad battles token i have that i've not touched the rivals one yet because obviously it's weekend league right now i'll probably start doing that on monday but uh, the team that i've got to compete in those three rivals games are, uh, well, it's this. So my full Bundesliga team with Bernardo Silva and Jao Cancelo on the right-hand side, if you watch the Road to Glory, you'll be like, ha, ah, I've seen what he's done there. Basically, it's the Road to Glory side. So if you want to go check out the Road to Glory, where we play with this in Weekend League, and we are going to obviously be going for objectives and such, feel free to check that out. If you don't want to, and you don't care about it, you just want to know what the instructions are, what the tactics are, and so on, then uh, bear with me, we'll get to it. So, as I say, informs count. Once to watch his count, weekend league or foot champs cards, they count as well. Um, just it's a very simple tip, but if you are um, new at the game, or maybe you just weren't aware of this, the bench will dictate the rating as well. I actually had Cavani on the bench uh, just because but he was making the squad an 84-rated one. So if you build your team and you have a lot of high-rated cards in the starting 11, just bronze bench. Put bronze, the lowest-rated bronze players you can get. Put them on the bench instead of, I don't know, all the players, maybe four of them, so you have three subs you can make. That should lower the squad rating down considerably. If I wanted to make this uh, a 79-rated squad, I probably could if I just took out the three highest-rated cards on the bench and replace them with 49 rated bronze cards. So in terms of instructions, I won't dwell on this too long. I've made a, an instruction video, um, was it yesterday, on the 352. So in fact, I'm not going to mention that at all. If you want to go check out the instructions, feel free to do so on that video. I think I use the same squad. Um, the 451 is the one that I'm using right now. I think it takes a certain opponent for you to be able to use this. I don't think you're going to be able to get away with it against everybody. And the reason I say that is because if your opponent knows how to defend and they can hit you on the counter, you may struggle somewhat. So those are the, the tactics, as it were. If you want to pause it, and um, I, I wouldn't necessarily suggest anyone to copy anyone else's tactics because it just won't work for you. But just... You know, look at them and think, right, well, I can tweak this, I can tweak that. So in terms of, of the formation, 4-5-1, Witzel is the CDM. And then you've got Brandt uh, and Werner as the cams. Plaza the striker, Perisic left, Bernardo Silva right, and the flat back four remains the same. Instructions, quite simple, really. Well, I say that's a lie, it's not. There's a lot of instructions, and a lot of them contradict each other as well. So get in behind and stay back, or sorry, come back on defence for... Um, Alessana Pla. Now, the reason I've done that is because it's basically going to be a Roberto Firmino. He's going to get forward when we have the ball, but he's going to come back and help out when we don't. And it helps out a lot. The only thing you'll notice with it is, and I kind of designed it this way to a degree, is when you first pick up the ball in the middle, you might end up picking up the ball with Pla. So you won't have a striker to aim at. What you need to do is use Brandt and Werner, essentially, as left and right forwards and they will bomb forward now the instructions on those players is just get in the box for the cross you have seven for your players in the box tab down here meaning that people will want to bomb forward to get into the box so axel witzel drop between defenders to make sure that he stays back um, in my experience, you're going to need someone here with a high defensive work rate. I have played with Toliso, has a high attacking work rate. The players in the box instruction will override the individual player instruction, in my experience. So drop between defenders means that he will stay back. Stay on the, the edge of the box for the cross, just in case he does venture forward. We don't want him just going too far. And then, of course, the cover center, just to, to make sure that he stays central. Uh, Perisic, same instructions as Bernardo Silva. These are very contradictory, right? So we've got come back on defense, cut inside, and get in behind. Now, the reason 
I've got these is that cutting inside means that he, they're going to essentially be joining Brandt slash Witzel. They'll move into that sort of space there. You'll pack the midfield with bodies because at the moment, if you look at that just and you don't think of instructions, you don't think about where the players are going to move. You look at that and you think, well, well Axel Witz is going to have to hold down that midfield by himself. So if we have Perisic and Bernardo Silva cutting inside and staying back, oh, sorry, come back on defence, chances are they're going to be in and around these sort of centre mid spots. And that way, you tend to get a mixture of an overlapping winger, but you also have a central midfield player because when they come back, they'll be in the middle. It's, a, it's an interesting one. Uh, it's a concept that I'm still working my way through. Uh, but generally speaking, what happens when we lose the ball is that we have anywhere between five and six people in the midfield. And on your mini-map, you'll notice that there's just a line of bodies across the, 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 the centre of it. And when they have the ball, they have to somehow break through the wall of China. There's literally six people in their way, and it's very difficult to get through. And you'll see that in, in the clips when we get there, there's a massive turnover in midfield because of the sheer number of bodies that we have. The, the fullbacks, this is up to you. Stay back while attacking, but I've got overlap. What that does for me, in my experience, is that they won't run forward unless you tell them to, but they'll be very happy to do it so l1 or lb is how you tell someone to run forward if you've got the ball with i don't know witzel and you're looking at schultz you press l1 or lb they make a forward run and they don't stop until there's nowhere left to run so what happens then is schultz on stay back while attacking but overlap is happy to run when you tell them to but they won't run unless you tell them to now i know that you can do that without the overlap you don't need that but what happens in my experience is that because you've got stay back while attacking, they are reluctant to go. Like, they'll try and go and then they'll stop and it's like, oh, well, I could have played it, but you just decided not to run. The overlap kind of then overrides stay back when you tell them to run, if that makes sense. Uh, the keeper I've got on sweeper keeper, this is down to personal preference. Two centre backs are, remain exactly the same, stay back while attacking, of course. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I do now and again go into a 4 1 2 and 2. But, you know, that's more for just keeping hold of the ball an awful lot. And it's it's quite simple. Everybody uses a 4 one 2 and 2 narrow these days. So it's not that difficult to sort of work out the instructions. The 4 5 one is what I like to use. It's just very difficult to break down, in particular in the midfield. And you can just overload it and you get the bodies in there. And you win the ball back all the time. But with that being said, let's get into the clips. So, uh, so far, I've only done the squad battles side of this objective. You know, win six games with an 83 rated squad. And I've got to be honest, and of course they, it's on world class difficulty. I've got to be honest, it wasn't that difficult to do. If you want a hint, um, basically you just start off and uh, obviously you get your, your first set of four opponents. Pick the easiest one, play it on world class if you're not that good. And then don't even worry, oh I've got these three difficult teams here. Just skip to the next one. There is going to be at least one, if not two, sometimes even three if you're super lucky. But there is going to be at least one squad in that set of four after every refresh that has a couple of bronze players, especially at this stage of the game. A couple of bronze players, a couple of people out of position, no chemistry, etc. If you get extremely unlucky, I've, I think I've been unlucky once since the game launched. And you end up getting teams with 75-80%, not percent, but you know chemistry, and they're relatively high rated then yes, okay, you're going to struggle. Maybe just stick it on world class and give it a go and see if you can do it. If you can't and you're under time constraints or you just don't like losing to the AI and you just can't stand the humiliation, just leave. Honestly, it's fine. Um, but but ultimately, yeah, uh, I, I think that if you just keep refreshing after you've played that one opponent, it shouldn't be too difficult. In terms of online, I would imagine that most people's squads are adaptable to this 83 rated. I don't think it'll be too difficult for you to be able to... Um, manipulate the bench and the bronze bench and if your squad is really high rated same with if it's low rated you should be able to use i'm guessing you've got a couple of untradeable cards that maybe are 84 85 you could just pack the bench full of those just to up the rating and of course if you've got an 82 rated team and you are very very close don't panic you've got ages to complete this uh you will eventually get the um the players required but this team in general I actually really like it I went full Bundesliga this this uh, this year because a lot of the years that go by the Bundesliga get a lot of love from EA they tend to get a lot of special cards and there are a lot of very good players in that league and this year in particular you know you've got Brandt, Kai Havertz, 
Goretzka's very good. Werner's always a, a danger. Um, Alessana Pla now has that card. Coutinho's in the league. There are a lot of really good cards there. My only gripe with the league really is the centre-back and the striker situations can be a little bit uh, bleak. So, for instance, I've got a Kanji at centre-back, but I've, I've got Boateng next to him. Boateng's good, but he's not the best. And the only other option really is Hernandez, who is around 80 to 90,000 coins, which is fine. But as soon as we pick up those two players, Akanji and Hernandez, there's literally no other place to go. You've got the best defenders in the league and they're only 84 and 83 rated. So that's a little bit irritating. It's the same with the striker situation. Yeah, you can get player of the month, Robert Lewandowski, but he doesn't really suit the way that I play. And I don't really, um, he doesn't do it for me, you know. Timo Werner, who, by the way, is only 83 rated, is the best player in the in the league for that position. So, yeah, it does get a little bit sparse here or there once you've bought the initial sort of mid-tier players. You're then looking essentially for icons, and that's why I've started building into a different league because I want to try and get the best of, of other leagues involved as well, if that makes sense. But uh, either way, it's not a difficult objective to do. If you want to see me do... Uh, objectives or squads based around other objectives then feel free to let me know in the comments down below which objective you want me to cover next and I can you know build a squad around it the only problem is of course that most of them require first owner players and with that it's essentially down to what you have I can do a first owner squad builder if you want but if you don't have them you can't copy it if that makes any sense whatsoever if you have enjoyed this video though do me a favor and hit that like button subscribe to the channel for you and until the next time goodbye Football Index. The game changed. Download the app now.